Hi, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. This is our webinar on select schools, and the focus of tonight is um, schools close to the beaches, which is a very popular destination and popular question from our side. So my name is Silvia. I am sales representative in a study, Italy, and uh, I am in charge of select students and um, I, I mostly deal with select program. And I will deep later on what the select program is and what are the features of this program. Uh, before um, introducing the program, I would like to introduce Educatius Group because I am from a study, which is one of the branches of Educatius Group Educatius has a large experience in the field of high school experiences, and they have offices in eight countries, basically all over the world. Uh, we, we do both inbound and uh, outbound um, programs. So we, we both send students abroad and welcome students to, to Italy. Um, tonight, I will speak about uh, the select program and the beaches destinations, uh, and uh, I will leave the stage in a few minutes to uh, some school representatives. We, we will hear from uh, three different um, examples of schools we have uh, next to, be to the beaches. And we will hear directly from the school representative their, their feeling and uh, their presentation. Before leading the stage to them, let's uh, briefly talk about the SELECT program. The SELECT program is the most flexible one. So it allows you to uh, pick your specific destination or your, spe your specific school. If you would like to uh, keep uh, practicing a specific sport or you are seeking for a specific subject, then the SELECT program is the right for you uh, because you can choose the school where to apply. Sometimes you can choose the school, sometimes you can choose the destination. Um, we will hear about San Luis Costal, which is a district, so you will pick the destination. And we will also hear about two other destinations, which are uh, one in Florida, Indian River, and the other one is in New Jersey, Shore Regional. They, the, the, the three of them are all very popular destination, but the, the first one is a district, so um, it has mo more than one schools where you can be placed. Uh, the other two are uh, single schools, so you can pick exactly where you're going to study. Here is a brief uh, description and a map of where those schools are. So uh, the first one we will hear will be um, represented by uh, Mr. Leslie O'Connor. And it is a San Luis Costal in California. Then we will hear about um, Indian River Charter High School, which is a very popular destination for at least the Italian market. And then we will go up to the north and uh, hear about Shore Regional High School, which is, again, a very, very popular high school selected by our Italian students. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the chat and we will leave uh, time at the end of the presentation to, to answer all your questions. Um, we are different representatives, so I can speak for the Italian market, but we, as I said, we are a, a group, so you will have the contact details of all your, your person uh, and your local offices so that you can have everything uh, handled and solve your, your doubts. Okay, so questions are for the end of the presentation. I uh, lead the stage to Mr. Leslie O'Connor. Sorry about that, Sylvie. I apologize. I was about to try and share my screen. I had it on mute first, so I apologize. I'm, I'm getting there.
All right, so Sylvia, you can see and hear me okay? Yes, we can see. Awesome. Well, good evening, parents. Um, my name is Leslie O'Connor. Uh, I'm the secondary director here in San Luis Obispo, which is a school district on the central coast of California. Um, um, I was formerly the principal at San Luis Obispo High School, and I'm actually European myself. So a big shout out to all of my European friends. I'm actually from Ireland. Uh, I moved to America many, many years ago to play football, uh, play soccer in college. And uh, I can tell you firsthand as a former principal of one of our high schools and now our secondary director, we love the fact that we have many, many uh, phone exchange students um, with these companies and education is being one of our proud partners. We have many, many students who have come to us from Italy, from Spain, and other uh, destinations, uh, Denmark, Sweden, to name but a few, Norway. Uh, but we also have students that will come to us from France and Asia as well. Um, I've given you my email address there, and I've also included my personal cell phone. The reason why I do that, even as a principal, um, I would share my contact information with my parents and my students. Um, and the reason why I want to bring that to your attention in our schools and in our school district in San Luis Obispo, we really, really take great pride in getting to know our students. So it's very common for me to have conversations with parents um, through my own personal email, my own personal cell phone. I meet with them every single day at the, at the front of campus. And I've had uh, visitors um, over the years um, of foreign exchange students, uh, parents, and, and even though they would come for a vacation, I would be quite happy to meet and chat with them. Um, so with that being said, um, why is San Luis Obispo such an amazing place? Um, first and foremost, it's on the central coast of California. And if you're familiar with Santa Barbara, um, Los Angeles, San Francisco, we um, are approximately five minutes from the Pacific Ocean. We have pretty much idyllic weather, uh, which means our weather pattern for the year is usually about 74, 75 degrees, very Mediterranean in nature. Uh, I wish we had some more rain, um, but we're a small community. Think small town America, about 35, 40,000 people. We're a college university town, um, and we're a very vibrant outdoor living space. I will tell you firsthand that some of my best friends that I share our life with in San Luis Obispo are from Germany, are from Sweden, are from um, Norway and Denmark, uh, and uh, some Italians also. And so we all found our way to San Luis Obispo, and we have a picture on the screen right now. This is where we hosted our senior prom uh, just this past year at one of our iconic downtown theaters. And this is the backdrop. This is the city of San Luis Obispo proper. Um, it's an amazing place for outdoor activities, for biking, for walking. And those peaks we see from our high school campus in San Luis Obispo. We also have Memorial Bay High School, which I will talk about also. Um, but this is great for hiking and walking. Above and past those peaks are, is the Pacific Ocean. So literally from my house, I can tell if there's uh, clouds over the ocean or not. Um, you can see from some of our pictures here, um, it represents the beach um, in the top left-hand corner. Every Thursday evening, we have what's called an outdoor farmer's market, very similar to European markets that we would have on Saturday mornings usually, where vendors come, uh, agriculturists, naturists would come and sell their products, their cheeses, their uh, products uh, to, to members of the public. We would have thousands of people every Thursday evening down through our farmer's market. This is an iconic picture. This is Morro Bay Rock. And this uh, is a tourist destination. destination. From Morro Bay High, it is a short walk from this specific rock and this part of the beach. And I've referenced two schools in our district. We have on the right-hand side, as you're looking, San Luis Obispo High School, the Tigers, and Morro Bay High School, the Pirates. Um, at San Luis Obispo High School, we tend to take our uh, international students for a whole year program. Um, and at Morro Bay High School, the students can come for a half year program, one semester, or a full year program. I will tell you that we usually have about 20 to 25 foreign exchange students at both high schools for the school year from various agencies across the world. And as you're looking at a map of where we are located, as I said, San Luis Obispo is on the central coast of California. We're pretty much halfway between Los Angeles and San Francisco. Um, I will tell you there are two high schools 
Mm-hmm. have gone through an amazing modernization program over the last five to seven years. We've spent close to $200 million, $200 million updating all of our facilities. And the top left-hand picture is our entrance to Morro Bay High School. And then the bottom picture is our entrance to San Luis Obispo High School. That was my former office. And, and so now I want to share some pictures of what it looks like on that campus. Um, this is Morro Bay High School. This is our aquatic center. And I love this picture because it gives you an aerial perspective of how close the campus is to the Pacific Ocean. In the background, you have the Morro Bay Rock uh, tourist def- destination, and you have the beach. And so our students are able to walk from our aquatic center on our campus um, very quickly, five minutes, and they can be easily on the beach and surfing. And this is a picture of our aquatic center at San Luis Obispo High School. Um, beautiful backdrop. Both swimming pools we finished in the last couple of years. Uh, each swimming pool was at a cost of about $7 million. Um, sports are a big part of our American high school experience. And we have water polo and swimming and diving for both males and females. And it's a great, great activity. Here we have uh, some pictures of some students uh, doing outdoor activities with regard to their education and outdoor learning. One of the aspects of Morro Bay that we really, really uh, uh, appreciate is the fact that they can easily uh, access the water. And so that's a major component of some of the areas of study. Uh, marine biology comes to mind. Uh, and, and so something to think about. Our students will often take uh, field trips right to the beach and study whilst they're in class. Outdoor activities um, and performing arts are a huge part of both of our high schools. And it's very common for us in our high schools uh, to have live music uh, every day of the week. Um, we have live bands, oftentimes at lunchtime. Student-led performances, whether it be theater or music, um, is a central part of what we do. So um, as I reflect on my years as a principal at San Luis Obispo High School, our Italian foreign exchange students, our Nordic foreign exchange students, we're just amazed by the fact that we would have live music at lunchtime with bands, student bands and outside bands. We would have food trucks and vendors coming in at lunch, almost like the college experience. And we would have performances by our students, whether it be dance or it would be uh, open mic would be a very popular piece with our students and our teachers at lunchtime. And again, one of the key pieces of our um, experience in high school are our extracurricular activities. Um, this is a picture of our San Luis Obispo band performing at halftime in their football game. Now, we'll have 120 to 150 members in our band programs at both high schools, and they practice um, both in a class experience and in the evening, and they perform pretty regularly at all of our outdoor events. And again, outdoor activities include choir performances, or orchestra and as I talked about our open mic where it's very common for our students to uh, plan to uh, perform almost busking style if you're familiar with the European term uh, so that they can show off their uh, amazing skills. I will say this we're able to do all of this because of the culture at our campuses. Uh, San Luis Obispo has about 1600 students and Morro Bay has about 800 so it's a little smaller but it's really fascinating. We have so little rain, all of our activities are built about outdoors. And so when it does rain, we actually struggle because we have minimal indoor opportunities to keep kids dry, especially during lunchtime. So it's an interesting conundrum or problem to have. I will say it probably rains maybe five to seven times a year. Um, So it's not a huge problem because a lot of our activities are outdoors. Part of our amazing restoration program, this is an example of one of our art buildings at Morro Bay High School. Um, I think when we're talking art, we, in the backdrop, we have a 3D design studio, we have a ceramics lab, we have students that are able to have wheels outdoor on the right hand side. This is at San Luis Obispo High School where our students are able to throw clay in an outdoor arena. We have many, many kilns. And as you can see, we do not have school uniforms. Students come to to school dressed in their own clothes, Um, but there are lots of hands-on activities for students. We have a green screen. Multimedia is huge at both of our high schools. So if you're into tech, multimedia, music, uh, creation. Uh, we have film animation. We put on our own film festivals. And we have the state of the art studios where we broadcast daily and students do and broadcast all of the activities on our campus. 
And we also have a very vibrant outdoor agricultural program where there's a lots of hands-on activities. We actually have a farm on one of our campuses at San Luis Obispo High School, and we have uh, students who compete, and, and we have tractors, we have forklifts, where students get a real hands-on experience of what it's like to work on a living farm. In our engineering programs, we also have an automotive program at both high school campuses. Um, where students are able to work on automobiles. They have state-of-the-art technology within those automobile shops. Uh, and it, it's a really popular program where kids are able to literally get their hands dirty, roll up their sleeves, and learn by doing. We are also very blessed to have a culinary program uh, on our campuses where we have a full working kitchen where students are able to produce and work with culinary teachers on a daily basis. We also have science and labs where students are able to employ lots of hands-on technology in their design fields. And you get to see some of the students in action here as they're putting designs in place. Sports, as I mentioned, is a huge part of the American uh, experience. I will say we have 23 sports on our high school campuses. Um, our sports are divided into three seasons of sport, the fall, the winter, and the spring. Uh, and when we're talking about football at the beginning, we're talking about American football. We also have uh, football mundial, soccer across the world. But we have um, sports that are available for both males and females. And here's a picture of our girls' tennis team and some of our girls' water polo teams. And again, all of our athletes are able to use our amazing facilities, um, whether it be in the pool with water polo or swim at San Luis High or Mora Bay High. And our events are on in the afternoon or early evening. Uh, in the fall, um, it doesn't get dark until 7.30, 8 o'clock. All of our fields and our stadiums are floodlit. Uh, and our pools are always proper temperature, about 75 to 78 degrees. I reference Morro Bay. Um, surfing is a huge part of our school programs. We actually have surf clubs and surf teams at both of our high schools. And it's very common for our students to go surfing at lunchtime. It's very, uh, very common for our students to surf before school and after school. It's very common for our teachers to go surfing with our students. So there's real relationship between our students and our faculty on each of our campuses. American football, I reference. Um, our Morro Bay campus was very successful this year and went all the way to the state final. And our San Luis High School teams have done the same in past years. Very common to have thousands of people attend uh, football games on a Friday night as part of the American folklore and tradition Americana, maybe a reference American TV shows like Friday Night Lights. We'll have our cheerleaders performing at halftime. We'll have our band performing. It's a community event. Um, think about that idyllic temperature, 70 degrees at night under floodlight and multiple thousands of people from our communities attending our events. Um, soccer is huge on both of our campuses, uh, basketball, girls and boys, and we also have girls and boys wrestling. Again, floodlit, beautiful fields, again, $200 million worth of upgrades to both campuses. Student body is huge on our campus. This is a picture of our student body leader on our San Luis Obispo High School during our COVID years, where we were able to have students on campus, obviously wearing masks. Um, but ASB, or Associated Student Body, is a big part of our campus where we really empower our students to be part of our leadership groups. And, and we really want to build experiences so they have dances, they have plays, they have lots and lots of opportunities to show their leadership capabilities where we turn ownership of what we do on our school campus over to our students and try to grow great citizenship amongst our students. Many of our foreign exchange students will actually be involved in our activities. Oftentimes we have assemblies and rallies at the beginning of the year where we honor and welcome our foreign exchange students to our campus. And so we put them front and center to make sure that they feel welcome and part of our campus and for them to be able to reach out and create friend groups very, very quickly with our students. I'm sorry, Leslie, if I interrupt you, you only have a couple of minutes more. Thank you. I'm almost done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, we have what we call advanced placement offering, offering. So we offer vibrant sports, extracurriculars, and that close connection to the beach. But we also have very strong academic programs. These are some of our advanced placement course offerings. And then we have graduation. Um, 11, 12 days ago, we had a graduation ceremony. It's outdoor, beautiful, thousands of people in our stadiums, and where students speak and our faculty honor our students. It's a very important transition for our young people as they move off to college. Our foreign exchange students often participate in the graduation ceremonies. It's oftentimes their parents actually attend as well. 
And this gives you an idea of some of the universities that our uh, graduates attend in universities in California and across the country. Uh, and we're very proud of their achievements. So again, from I'm in Washington, D.C. right now with a group of students, uh, but from um, uh, an Irishman's perspective, attending school in California and in San Luis Obispo, um, our students who are foreign exchange come. They're nervous at the beginning of the year, but I will tell you, there are so many tears shed in mid-June as they depart and fly back to Europe or across the world because they've had such an amazing experience with us. And uh, we look forward to answering any questions and inviting for years to come many more students on our campus. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. That was very helpful. Then we will fly to the other coast and explore uh, a totally different environment, a school with a very unique um, environment, which is um, in Florida, another very popular destination. So I uh, leave the stage to uh, Mr. Michael. And uh, let's hear about uh, this school in Florida, which is Indian River Charter High School. Thank you. Hi, can you guys hear us okay? Sylvia, can you hear us okay? Yes. Yep. Okay, wonderful. Hi, my name is Michael Nafziger, um, and I'm the Artistic Director at Indian River Charter High School. And my name is Cindy Aversa, and I'm the International Program Coordinator. So really quickly, Cindy was our principal last year, and she's, over the years, has grown our international program from a couple of students to last year we had how many, Cindy? 65. 65. And she's retired from a principal, but loved working with our international students so much that she's stayed on, um, and is her full job now is to work as the coordinator for the international students. So it's awesome that we have a full-time employee that helps with and, and works with with our international students. All right. Nope. All right, here we go. We'll start with the video. Can you hear the video, the music? Yes. see in that video was a couple of things and one of them was the heavy influence of the arts at our school um, and I'm the former theater director before I moved into the artistic director position 
And the arts are thriving here, but it's not only the arts, it's the academics, the AP, all the other wonderful programs we have, but the umbrella over all of that and what makes us so original is our sense of family and our sense of home. And um, I'll talk a little bit about that as we move into the presentation. All right, so where are we? We are on the east coast of Florida. You can see we're um, about an hour and 20 minutes south of Disney World or Orlando and just up north of Miami there. That is our coast right there on the bottom right hand corner of your screen and up on the top left hand corner. We are a small beach community. Um, the thing that's nice about Florida is you can go to the beach year round and the water's warm and it's warm outside. Every once in a while in December, it gets a little too cold. But besides that, it's a, it's a beach community hands down. And in fact, a couple of years ago, I had some students that had a couple hour break between their classes and they came to their evening class with me and they were sunburned. And I said, what the heck happened? They said, oh, we went to the beach during our break. So the kids are known to do that, but we do trips to Disney World and other adventures around Florida. And um, Florida is just an amazing, amazing place to live. There it goes. All right. So we've been around since 1998. The great thing is we're located on a college campus, which is wonderful as we can do some dual enrollment with our international students. Um, we do specialize in the academics and the arts. We have about 700 students around there and 7% of our students are international students, which is wonderful. It's a huge population here on our campus. Um, what makes us different is we do specialize in the visual and performing arts. We have an open campus, which means there's no bells that ring, there's no locked doors. Kids are allowed to leave campus and come back um, openly throughout the day. Our schedule is more like a junior college in the sense that um, you might have a two hour break, as I said, in the middle of your day, depending on your schedule. We do have an advanced golf program, which is absolutely wonderful. And a lot of our students who want to play, international students who want to play sports, and actually our, our students here at the school do play sports. We have a, a, a our local high school where they're allowed to play there. So we have had our international students play soccer and run track. And uh, one of my, I've hosted students before, and uh, he played soccer for Sebastian, which is another high school. So even though we have golf on our campus and we don't have the other traditional sports, those are still an option for you. All right, so just like with most schools, we have AP and honor classes. Um, we, because we are located on a college campus and a lot of our students are able to dual enroll, so take college classes while they're in high school, uh, they receive their degrees, their AA degrees from college while here on our campus. If you noticed or remembered in the video, the kids walking down the, the concrete trail through the woods there, through the forest there, that was the, the path over to the college. So it's right there, it's just steps away to take those college classes. We have all the wonderful clubs that most schools have, creative writing clubs, key club, National Honor Society, Model United Nations. And then um, we have a great percentage, 98% of students go on to two-year programs. A lot of it, they go in, or excuse me, two-year or four-year programs. A lot of the times they go in to study the arts or other topics. Um, you see there is NYU. We just had a student that's now in her second year at NYU Tisch studying acting there. Again, dual enrollment at the state college here, which is an amazing state college. Um, you can get uh, uh, college credits here as a international student. Um, you're limited to one class a semester, um, but it's still an option. It's an opportunity to, to experience what college is like in America while you're here getting your high school degree. Now, this is what makes us so original and special. Um, we have a program known as home base and what happens is when you come to this school as a freshman an american student comes to the school as a freshman they're put into a cohort of other students they stay with this cohort all four years so the same group freshman year sophomore year junior year senior year and so they really get to know each other and the thing that's wonderful about this is when the international students come, you are put into one of these home bases. So instantaneously, as soon as you get on our campus, you are able to have a family here. 
Um, they do activities together. They have an apartment on campus. Now it's not a place that an apartment, so to speak, but what it is is a room that has couches and refrigerator and a microwave. And it's a home away from home for our students. And like I said, if the student has breaks, they can hang out in that room. But not only that, there's team building exercises and activities that our international students do with each of their home bases to build those relationships with American students. And I think in the world of international students, that's what sets us apart is that ability to connect to our students on multiple levels and to immerse them into the experience of an American school and particularly our school. Um, we do have some wonderful brand new facilities that we've just opened up. They really, the pictures don't do it justice, but this on the top is a brand new uh, multi-purpose room that we just built. And that's where a lot of our meetings are held and some of our productions are held. Um, we have brand new classrooms, state-of-the-art classrooms. It's a brand new building with 16 new classrooms in it. They're just absolutely beautiful. And those just opened last year. Um, now here is, now being the artistic director, Two things. One, I'm a little partial to the performing arts. And if you haven't noticed, I'm doing all the talking. That's because as a former actor, I make I like to make everything about myself and love to talk about myself and my school <laughs> as much as possible. So Cindy is really the nuts and bolts of this program, but I can't help myself when I have an audience. So I apologize. But we have wonderful programs. You can see dance, musical theater, visual arts, acting, orchestra, and choir. So our choir. Um, Every other year go, goes and performs in Carnegie Hall. They just performed in districts and got uh, straight superiors and then went on to states to compete. Um, there, it's a huge choir program, very successful, but not only do they do very well in competition and travel to perform at different festivals, they also sing at local events and um, perform throughout the community, which is just an amazing way for a student to experience the, the Vero Beach, the community of Vero Beach through the arts. Our dance program, we have every year we have a couple international students that come here just for dance. We do have a master ballet instructor and he's absolutely phenomenal. He's at the, he could be teaching at a college level and he's here teaching in Little Vero Beach. Um, and then we also have another dance teacher who teaches modern, contemporary and world dance. So dances of different cultures. Um, and so that's a wonderful program if you're interested in dance. Our jazz and orchestra program. So we do have a full orchestra and we do have a full jazz program. Our jazz is, is uh, conducted by Mr. Dave Mundy, who's a graduate of Berkeley School of Music. And he his jazz band is award-winning and they perform all over the community. And same with the orchestra. The orchestra just went to districts and received uh, straight superiors as well, and then went on to states and did very well there. Um, and with all of these, classes it might be intimidating but we have entry level classes so if you just want to learn to play the piano and you've never touched the keyboard we have keyboarding one if you've been playing you know the violin for 10 years and you want to come to the school and join our top orchestra we can make that happen as well in other words when you get here i have students audition for me all the time for musical theater and i see what they can do and we place them in that class according so these classes, these visual performing arts classes are worked through your schedule. So you might have math class, but then you have keyboarding and then you have dance tech one and they're worked into your regular schedule in the sense they're not after school programs. They're full blown programs that you participate during the day. And again, you can come in at any level. You've never played the piano. You've been playing the piano for 10 years. We have a placement for you. Musical theater is another popular one. We've had a lot of international students come here to participate in musical theater. Um, these are just some of the recent productions we've done. We have an amazing outdoor dome that we perform outdoors. It's covered because unlike California, it does rain quite a bit in Florida, um, but we have this amazing outdoor venue. We have a black box theater, and now we have a multi-purpose room. Um, our musical theater productions are huge. Uh, they're sponsored by big, like one of our sponsors was Roberto Orsi. He's the, he's the producer of Transformers, the movie. He sponsored one of our musicals. So they're great big productions and the orchestra and the jazz band all come together to create these wonderful shows. Um, the acting program is one of the top in the nation. Um, here in the state of Florida, they have a festival called the Main Stage. And if you're selected as a Main Stage uh, performance, 
it's like winning the state championship. It's them acknowledging you're the best in the state in terms of performing or acting. And in the past nine years, we've been picked seven times. Um, several of these, looking back at these pictures, several, several of these kids are now in the business. The girl in the middle with the curly blonde hair and the red lipstick, I was just talking to Miss Aversa. Miss Aversa, she's just signed um, to her to a movie contract. Uh, she lives in New York. And um, a lot of kids go on to study any of the arts from our school. Technical theater, it should say just technical. Um, we have classes on campus for sewing costumes, for doing lighting design, sound design, set building, um, any makeup, hair, everything you can think of. And these students not only study it in the classroom, but then they work the shows. So they sew the costumes for the productions. They, um, they run the light boards for the shows. If you want the visual arts, we have all different components of the visual arts, um, several amazing photography art uh, teachers here on campus. In fact, we've been, our school's even been booked to paint, paint murals around town. The one in the upper corner there is a mural on a building here in town, and that's not the last one. We're currently um, cooperating with our local uh, hospital. Where we're going to do a huge mural there as well, and the students do all of that work. And then this is a newer program we're opening up. We're realizing that the arts are moving much more in a digital direction. And so we are doing uh, video production, animation, uh, gaming, all of the other digital art components that uh, are involved here. And so we're excited that we're gonna have this on our campus now as well. Um, our international exchange program, as I said, it's a huge component. This is a picture of a couple of years ago. Um, this is, these are all international students here on our campus. Um, they can do a, a full year or two semesters. Uh, they have the option to earn a Florida high school diploma, which is wonderful. Um, homestay students, all of our students are homestay and often stay with families who have kids here already at the school. So example, you might have a brother or sister here on our campus, which is just wonderful. I had two international students this year, one from Switzerland and one from Italy, and I absolutely love them. We're sad to see them go. Um, it is a big pop percentage of our population. And Miss Aversa and the rest of the home-based teachers coordinate a lot of activities with our international students. Um, we're constantly meeting with them as a group to making sure that they understand what's going on at the school, what they need to know, and working with them to make sure they're successful here on our campus. Next year, these are just the numbers that are starting to come in. Um, here's, uh, these are kids from this year's international students, but then on the numbers there with Brazil 5, Germany 12, Norway 2, these are the numbers that are starting to come in for this coming school year. So we're starting to bring in our students already. We're excited as we love to have them on our campus. And we have wonderful events here. Um, as I said, it's, it's like a big family on our campus. Um, and so we're always doing clubs and fairs and we do student art shows. We partner with the local gallery where we're able to show our art in the local gallery. And we also do gallery shows here on campus. Um, we do a big carnival on our campus and that's where we do our powder puff football game. That's where the girls play football against each other and the boys cheerlead. And we had many international students played in that and cheered in that as well. Um, we do our senior beach photo, which is an amazing morning for everybody involved and all the international students are involved in that as well. Um, and of course, as I said, we have our powder puff game and our dances and proms and everything else that the international students are able to attend. Grad bash, which is really big here in Florida, where they shut down uh, Universal. It's Universal, isn't it? Yes. And they fill the whole park with uh, seniors all from the state of Florida. And they just have a, an absolutely wonderful time. And then, of course, the musical theater and all the other productions involved. And as I said before, our, some of our students are able to graduate with their diploma, even if they don't graduate because they're, they're you know, juniors or whatever they might be. They walk the, uh, the seniors walk the stage as part of the graduation so they can have that American experience at graduation ceremony, which is always wonderful. So, of course, even though I hogged the mic, um, one more introduction is Miss Miss Aversa or Miss Cynthia Curtis as well is fine. And then I'm Michael Mafsinger, and here's our contact information. 
and our website, and we're happy to answer any questions. Did you want to add anything since I rambled on, Ms. Aversa, that whole time? No, I think you did a great job. Thanks. Mr. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. We're excited to hear your questions and excited to talk about our school with you. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation. Um, let's move forward. Well, let's move up to the north. Uh, very close to New York City and to the beaches as well. Uh, again, a totally different uh, environment, a very good school. Uh, I leave the stage to uh, Alice Simonson, Mrs. Alice Simonson, and who will introduce us um, the Shore Regional High School. Ciao Thank tutti, <laughs> grazie mille. Uh, okay, let me present here. <clears throat> Okay, so thank you so much. Uh, yes, Shore Regional High School is our school and I am the International Program Coordinator. My contact information is here. We also have lots of um, wonderful images and videos posted on our social media. Uh, so please uh, take advantage and take a look at those. So here's just the image of our school. We are a public school. We are a public regional school serving uh, the high school ages. Uh, we have a great faculty ratio of approximately 12 faculty teachers to one student. And uh, as far as public high schools go in New Jersey, we have uh, just a little bit more than 600 students. So we are a very small public school. We like to call ourselves a public school that really looks like a private school when you look at um, how everything falls together. We offer quite a bit and we've been an I-20 school since 2016. Uh, so to situate ourselves, you can see uh, we are just about two and a half miles uh, from the mid coast of New Jersey. Uh, you can get the sense a bit here of the coastline. We have a national park here at um, Sandy Hook, and we are just across the bay here into New York City. So you can get basically to New York City in about uh, maybe about an hour and a half by train a little bit less. We have ferry service as well into New York City. So it's a really great space to be. We're also not too far from Philadelphia. So we are kind of in that um, New York, tri-state, Connecticut, New Jersey area and with quick access to certainly New York City and Philadelphia. A little aerial view of our campus. Uh, not only are we near the ocean blue, we are also on a lake. Although in this aerial photo, for some reason, the water looks quite brown, but it is a beautiful uh, man-made lake that there's a beautiful path and the community walks around, our students walk around it for phys ed class or just for general health and well-being. Uh, so that's sort of the sense of our campus from an aerial view. And even the coordinates on the latitude and longitude. So just to get a sense of the sending districts, we are a regional public school. That means that we have various areas, towns around us that come to us. And that means that the schools that serve us are varied and outside of our district. So one of our uh, sending districts is Mammoth Beach. So here's an aerial view. You can get the sense of certainly the beach aspect. So all of my students that come from this town uh, really live, breathe, and just uh, are just amphibious almost, so uh, the water is a part of their uh, existence, certainly. Another uh, one of our, so Mammoth Beach was the first one and now Ocean Port just by the sense of their names. Uh, this is a little bit more inland, but it's certainly a port town with some different uh, tributaries running through it. So many families have the um, wonder and delightment of living on the water. Another one of our sending districts is Seabright, uh, a very long, skinny continuation uh, headed up towards that national park I mentioned, uh, Sandy Hook up here at the top. And another one of our sending districts is West Long Branch, which is exactly where our school is situated. Um, you can see sort of, again, that view from the school looking out towards the coastal area, just about two and a half miles away. So uh, I actually live in this town and uh, my children 
starting next year, will be attending this school as well. And I've been here for 27 years. So uh, just to give you a little bit of a reference point, uh, starting our international program, we became an I-20 school in 2016. Uh, we really started out small and we still like to keep it small. The most uh, of students that we have really were in the 2019 to 2020 year, we had four students. So that's been as big as we've gotten it. We are a small school and we didn't wanna get too big. Although I will say for next year, we have accepted our largest cohort of 10 students. So um, we're growing. I think that's probably about where we, where we will stay as far as um, F1 and J1 accepted students. Uh, but just to get a sense of the students that we've had uh, over these past uh, five years. And then this year was the year of España. Tenemos cuatro alumnos, tres alumnos. Uh, so here they are this year, uh, Ana, Marta, and Alejandro. So uh, it was the year of Spain. This is at the orientation. Just to get another sense, uh, just from the international lens, these are not tuition students, but these are our ELL students. So we try and look at it more global. So we have international students coming to us from all different ways. So these students are here, they live in our towns and they come and they also add just such a wonderful element. I also teach English language learners. So these are my students this year uh, carving uh, pumpkins. So we do a lot of things to bring American traditional traditions to our students that are um, here from all different walks of life. And that being said, we also want to honor the international lens for our students that are here and have them travel outward. So these are students over the same amount of time that we've been having international students come in, uh, F1 and J1 visa students. We also really try and promote the other way of having our students travel abroad. So these are some of those students that have uh, traveled abroad during that time as well. Additionally, we have sister schools. So we reach um, to uh, France. We have a sister school in France, saint jean uh, just outside of Paris in Agnières, sur Seine. And uh, most recently we've added a sister school in Italia, in Liceo Cornaro um, in Veneto. So we have a exchange planned to go there, in fact, this coming year. So that's very exciting. Just to get a little bit of a lens, we also have a very strong international club that uh, is really fed by all of these students and all of this global uh, awareness and excitement. So this is are some of those students, our campaign for Ukraine, uh, Pulsera project, raising money for uh, Ecuador and Guatemala and some of our students in our club. Another aspect of that is we have a series that I created with our international program called Global Gaps. So if you come to our school, we have you at some point create a global gap. It's not where you're talking about your country is my capital is this and um, this is our foods, but really it's about you. It's you getting the chance to uh, frame for us your life back home. Uh, what is your school like? What is your family like? What is your commute to school like? Uh, what, how much do you study? How many hours do you work? So it's very much a, um, a personal lens that you would give about your country. So we love hearing from everyone uh, from their global gaps and our students that travel abroad also come back and give their own global gaps as well. So this has become super popular over the past years. Well, just some initiatives that we've done certainly with our international club. I wanted to talk about those. And then segueing into our academics. So we are a comprehensive uh, academic school offering honors, non-honors track, um, college track, certainly uh, AEP and IB uh, classes as well. So we offer the gamut as a public school uh, for whatever level of academics you want to strive for in all of the uh, disciplines. So I have the link here to go to those, but I think I'll just um, basically leave it in that we have a very comprehensive, again, for a school of 600 students, uh, we offer still um, many languages, many electives, in addition to the regular required courses that the state of New Jersey requires us to have. Uh, certainly, it's always interesting to point out that we're an IB school, so if a student is looking to maintain their uh, IB 
um, credits and to be able to go home and have a continuum of a portfolio and uh, their transcripts, certainly uh, any IB courses would be easily transferable. Uh, as a public high school, we also have a very large culture of sports, a very winning culture of sports that has been here since we uh, opened our school in the 60s. Uh, so a very comprehensive look at our three seasons, uh, offering uh, not just um, athletics in the true sense, but also dance team, cheerleading, um, swimming, golf as well. I know that had been mentioned previously. So just a super comprehensive and uh, you know, sometimes much to my dismay, lots and lots of awards with uh, athletics. So uh, they, our coaches do a great job here with this. We also are starting a club volleyball team for girls this year. Uh, in addition, we also offer 50 different clubs and activities that students can join, uh, student council and government, as well as our uh, theater troupe. So I'll just quickly click on this link. Uh, so I run our orientation every year for our international students when they arrive, and uh, I often show them these. So every club has created their own sort of um, trifold featuring what their club might offer. So um, that club event, that club fair happens in the beginning of the year so that students can decide what clubs they want to join. So I show all of these trifolds to get uh, the students sort of thinking about what club or clubs they would like to join. I, as the international program coordinator, require that our international students get involved. So they have to be involved in clubs. Uh, we also encourage them to be involved in sports. Um, for obvious reasons, but it just really makes the experience that much more enriching. Uh, one of those clubs is our student government. Our student government runs a myriad of activities. Um, one of those in particular is a recent event that we had in the spring called Battle of the Classes, which is just a really super coming together of all of the students in the school uh, to compete for um, in such things as food drives, raising food uh, for our community um, to actual fun sporting events at the end and then the class wins. So just a wonderful way of team building and uh, just a culture of creating that sense of family that I think our school does a really great job. Um, we just had graduation last night and I'd say about four of the six speeches were talking about the sense of family that uh, the faculty and staff and students have here at Shore Regional being a small public school. And then I did want to mention our award-winning Shore Players. This is their Facebook page. This year they put on uh, two productions, a uh, musical in the spring. We did Legally Blonde. Um, they also did a, uh, a one act in the fall. Um, I'm forgetting what the one act was this year, um, but maybe it will come to me, but certainly uh, a wonderful program if you're into theater. And uh, students can actually juggle doing maybe a minor role in the play as well as still uh, doing a sport. The short players tends to work really well with the student population. We've had many students, international students, do sports as well as do the plays. Uh, I mentioned the orientation. So in August, towards the end, so we can accommodate all of our international students. We run just a specific international student only orientation where our international club uh, members come and they function as ambassadors. They give the tour uh, around the school. We work on our schedules with the guidance counselors. And uh, it's really a special event to start off the year just with the international students and the international club members. Uh, and then at the end of the year, we have events throughout the year, but we just had our international student farewell just the other day. We had a beautiful outdoor picnic. Um, the international club students brought um, treats. It was sort of an international flair potluck. And on the lawn outside by the lake, we had our, um, our farewells for our three Spanish students. And I put together a video every year for our departing students. 
even over our COVID year, we had one young lady from Italia, Francesca, and um, just sort of put together a featured video from her. Even we couldn't believe she was able to come for the entire COVID year. So uh, really special. Just a little bit of that. Uh, Francesca uh, was a senior and she was able to graduate. It was just fantastic. She took, we have uh, really high standards in order to get the diploma. So oftentimes, um, as much as we like to have senior students, we do tend to, the reality is, is um, uh, accept students that are not looking to graduate just because it is so, uh, such a stringent um, requirements that New Jersey has. So it is difficult to get that diploma if you're coming for the one year as a senior. Francesca was able to do it and that meant taking two US history classes her senior year. So she had quite a heavy load. So it can be done, but you really have to be committed to that academic piece and um, maybe forego some of those other activities if you do in fact want to graduate. So we have done it, we will do it, but um, that is a reality of that situation. And I guess that's all I have. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alice. And thank you all of you to, for giving us a real taste of, of your schools, which is very, very useful. Uh, this is now uh, the, the, the time for question, if anyone has, has them. Um, if there are no question, uh, I leave here uh, our contact details so that you can contact myself or your local reference uh, ref referee for, uh, for having more information on those school we have listened to tonight. So let me check whether, no. Okay, so it seems there are no questions so far. Thank you again for joining us. And thank you uh, for presenting your uh, very uh, beautiful schools. Um, and that's it. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you. Good night. Grazie mille. Ciao. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. -bye. Ciao. Bye.